Heads up, we make adult reviews for adult gamers. What's up guys, Farspec here with another in our Arena of the Planeswalker series, also known as our attempt to slap a defibrillator on the twitching corpse of this game. If you somehow stumbled your way into this video, I highly recommend you go check out the rest in the series for a whole metric fuck heap of content. Alright, so let's dive into this episode's topic. Which color is the strongest? In other words, which one do you pick when you want to steamroll the crap out of your 14 year old nephew? Here's the ground rules. First, we're only looking at base game content here. Only the stuff in the master set counts. We'll get around to expansions at some point, but as they're getting harder to find, we wanted to focus on the set that most people have. Secondly, by color, we mean to take into account all aspects of that color. Planeswalker, squads, and available spells. Third, we are ranking the parameters around the idea that you will be playing on some sort of additional terrain beyond the measly little butt squirt of plastic we got from Hasbro in the base set. Whether it's HeroScape stuff, homemade terrain, whatever paints your tain, the point is that if you play only on the baseboards and plastic, then the strongest units are A, ranged, and B, whoever gets the best spell cards first. Playing without terrain sucks, and I highly advise against it. Go check out our how-to terrain videos if you're interested in making your own. Fourth, a disclaimer. Our opinions on this are based on our vast experience in the game, and some of the stuff may be situational from a tactic, strategy, or luck standpoint. Much like the game itself, try not to take this too seriously. That being said, by all means, let us know what you think about our ratings in the comments. So, let's hop right in with a look at each color's strength and weaknesses. First up is Red. Our planeswalker here is Chandra Nalar Pyromancer. Nothing about her stats is really amazing. Actually, stat-wise, she's pretty much the most middle-of-the-road planeswalker. Her abilities do make up for some of this. Double attack effectively lets you spit six attacks between two units, or focus them all on one. Superheated is a good little ping ability that can pick off weak units. You can combo this with double attack for three total attacks per turn. Compared to other Planeswalkers, she actually has the highest base level damage output, but she does suffer a bit in the range department. A bit of a glass cannon. Moving on to red squads. First up is the Blazing Firecats. Stat-wise, they're very quick with 7 move. Fairly tough at 3 attack slash 4 defense. Ability-wise, Haste is fairly situational, but can be useful on tight maps. While Intense Strike is nice when it triggers, but statistically isn't super likely. However, their abilities and stats do make the Firecats the main combat troops for Red. Next is the Flamewing Phoenixes. Stat-wise, these guys are pretty damn weak. One life, one defense, they go down quicker than your ex-girlfriend at a bobbing for dick party. Their abilities, however, do help out. They are the only flying troops in the base set, and flying is extremely useful on any battleground with water. Water stops AOTP creatures dead in their tracks. Phoenixes pass right over that bullshit. While they are weak, the Phoenixes do have an ace up their sleeve with Rebirth, which can resurrect them. However, it's actually kinda crappy. One unit has to be alive for it to work, and the only way to effectively keep these guys alive is to keep them out of a battle. You basically have to let one of the three units hang way back, keeping him from doing any real damage if you want to have a chance to use Rebirth. As for red spells, their enchantments are all about buffing your units. Stoke the Flames is the standout spell. One enchantment can get you up to six attack dice. Ridiculous. Their sorceries are all about damage, Incinerate being the big one. It will one-shot any squad creature in the game at base life stats. Combine it with dual casting and you can kill two units in one turn without even attacking. With red spells, you're either buffing your own units a bit or doing direct damage to opponent units. There are certain combos in there, for instance Pyroclasm to have a Suicide Bomber Phoenix. Let's move on to the next color in our showdown, White. White's Planeswalker is Gideon Jira, Combat Mage. His combined stats are actually the lowest of all Planeswalkers in the base set, but his abilities attempt to make up for it. First off, we have Avatar of Justice. Basically, he gets more attack dice scaling off how many enemies are within two hexes of him. So he'll always actually have four attack dice, and this can theoretically scale up to 21 attack dice. It is a really strong ability, but his lower life forces you to be careful with its use. 
Counter-Strike is a bit of an offset to the lower life, but it's kind of random. The key with Gideon is that he is a melee powerhouse, but he needs to wait out the battle and get some buffs from enchantments before you throw him in the fray. As for units, first we have the core hookmasters. Decent stats, a little bit of range to keep them out of trouble. Detain, their ability to lock up an opponent's squad can be incredibly useful if used at the right time, but can be countered by an opponent who plays around it. Keep in mind it doesn't work on heroes or planeswalkers. Then we have the Rocks veterans. These guys are fairly strong, potentially becoming the toughest melee squad in the game thanks to battle formation, which can get their defense up to planeswalker levels. Trample is not a big deal unless you buff these guys strongly. Then it can be a serious issue for your opponent. If your Rocks veterans do get split up on the battlefield, their usefulness goes way down. They have to fight as a cohesive melee unit. As for White's spell deck, their enchantments focus mainly on buffing your troops, and in that respect, White does really well. Draw the right enchantments at the right time, and you can make your Rocks veterans have 7 attack and 8 defense, and that's before their ability buffs. The sorceries are a bit of a grab bag. The standouts are the healing spells. Healing solve is nice, near-death experience is really good too. While two hit points worth of healing doesn't really seem that big, it can actually prolong a creature long enough to win. I've personally had this happen. Inspired Charge is also awesome. You can curb stomp the shit out of your opponent's squads if you time it right. Now on to Blue, whose planeswalker is Jace Bellerin, Mind Mage. His combined stats add up to 28, the best in the base set. Where he suffers is in the inability to increase these stats either through abilities or spells. As for his abilities, Focus Thoughts lets you mill through your deck, which is a huge boost given Blue's excellent spells. More on these in a minute. Mind Stealer is an amazing ability if it procs. It can completely fuck your opponent if you get the strategy right. Walk their Planeswalker into a swarm of your units, and then when they run away next turn, they'll take opportunity attacks. That's nasty. Blue's first squad is the Illusionary Projections, which are a good blend of somewhat tanky plus a decent amount of damage output. Collective knowledge is no biggie, but card draw is nice, especially for blue. Illusionary Deception, wherein you can switch spots with one of the projections in your Planeswalkers, is either horrible or excellent depending on the scenario you're playing. In straight up destroy your opponent scenarios, it can be a bit limited as these guys have a shorter range than Jace, and thus he'll be closer to danger if you switch him in. In scenarios like Capture the Flag, King of the Hill, etc., where you need a certain unit on a certain terrain, hex, objective, whatever, it can be super useful. Run your projections to the goal, then switch out one for Jace after you've soaked up some of the focus of your opponent's squads. The Leyline Phantoms are deceptively tanky, actually having the best squad defense in the base set. Their ability to phase through opponent units is really nice on tighter battlegrounds with a good amount of terrain. Now there's no back attack or flanking bonus in AOTP, so it's a bit less useful in wide open settings. I find their best use is to run them straight to the opponent's planeswalker and smash on their face. As for blue spells, these are arguably some of the strongest in the game, or if not the strongest, at least the most annoying. Rather than focusing on buffing your troops or debuffing opponents, they're all about a screwing with your opponent's strategies. There's only 4 enchantments, but 2 unsummon an opponent's squad, completely removing them from the battlefield until resummoned. The other 2 counter spell an opponent's enchantment or sorcery. Played at the right time, this can completely fuck an opponent's turn, or even their overall plans. Sorceries are, again, all about fucking with the other player's plans too. Mind control is really powerful. Misdirection steals an enchantment. Talent of the telepath lets you cast an opponent's spell back on them. Unsummon gives you another return the creature to the reserve deal, and Selective Memory lets you cast any of those twice. Stupidly strong. Now let's move on to Black. Liliana Vess, Necromancer, is the Black Planeswalker. She's got high life, decent attack, decent range. As for abilities, zombie toughness looks really good at first, but the catch is is that it forces Liliana to stick close to the zombies at almost half her total range. Ideally, you'd like to keep her a bit farther out. Snuff Out, on the other hand, is ridiculously overpowered. So much so that I've seen a fair amount of people house rule it to something weaker. What it does is allows you to destroy a squad creature that has any amount of damage already done to it. If that unit has taken a hit, you can one-shot it. And you can use it once per turn. 
Your buddy got one of them rhinos with eight defense dice. Yeah, man is a single hit, and it's a goner. Personally, I think this is the strongest ability in the base game, and possibly the entire game as a whole. As for squads, we start with the Blighted Reavers, whose stats are fairly decent for melee units. Not as potentially strong as the Rocks Veterans or the Leilai Walkers, but their strength lies in their single ability, the Necrotic Stench. The ability to subtract two defense dice from any opponent unit is again ridiculous. Probably the strongest squad ability in the base set. Next up are the Restless Zombies. Now they have fairly crappy stats, but this is offset by the ability to keep coming back to life again and again like a bad sequel. You have a 40% chance to resurrect them if the entire squad is eliminated. They are basically meat shields for Liliana and should be used as such. As for Black's spells, Black enchantments are all about debuffing opponent creatures or just outright killing them. Duress and Mental Agony are the only real counters to Blue's superior spell power. Dark Harvest is a good combo with the Restless Zombies as well. Black Sorceries give you huge damage dealing potential. Bone Splinters is basically trade one of your creatures for one of theirs, except yours can come back. Rise of the Dark Realms lets you bring back one of your Reavers. And Killing Wave has the potential to do the most damage in the game in a single turn. If surrounded by 6 units, that's 18 damage. It will kill any base level unit in the game in one shot, and can frequently be used to take out an entire squad. Finally, let's wrap up with green. Nissa Ravane, Animist, is the green planeswalker. Her stats are pretty decent. She is tied for the highest range with Jace. Where she really shines is her speediness. More on this in a moment. Her first ability, Keen Sight, adds plus two range to squads near her. Now this only affects the elf rangers in the base game. Plus two range is nice, but honestly it's not that strong of an ability. Sprint is her other ability, and from a strategic standpoint, this is amazing. It gives her the ability to move up to three hexes after attacking, and gives her the highest effective move in the game. It's all about hit and run with Nyssa. Move five, attack at seven range, move three more hexes, rinse and repeat. Onto the first squad, the Elf Rangers. Now these guys have a decent attack and really good range if they're near Nyssa and her keen sight ability, but they have horrid defense. Three life is decent for squads, but these guys will not stand up to melee combat with their puny one defense die. They're much like Nyssa, all about hit and run, picking off one or two enemies per turn then retreating to escape distance. That's where their squad sprint ability comes in, as it's basically the exact same as Nyssa's sprint ability. Finally, we have the Pummel Root Elementals, which honestly are just a somewhat buff version of the White Rocks Veteran Rhinos. Their baseline attack and defense are one higher than the Veterans. Where they lose out is that they only have the Trample ability, which we discussed earlier with the Rocks Veterans. Useful if you roll well, and crap if you don't. As for green spell cards, you have a bit of a grab bag between decent and crap. Green's enchantments aren't that great. The only standout one is Fog, which effectively negates an entire attack phase of an opponent's turn. Naturalize is a nasty counter against opponents playing black or white. Sorcery-wise, Bountiful Harvest is a great healer. Overrun is more or less useless. You don't want to get your rangers adjacent to other figures, and your pummel roots already have trample. Primeval Light is a table reset for enchantments. Decent if you get it at the right time, but crap if you got your enchantments first. Sky Reaping is completely useless unless you're up against red with their flying troops. The rest are single turn buffs, useful in certain situations, but not that great if you roll crappy. So there's an overview of the base game Planeswalker squads and spells. Let's move on to the big question, which one is the best? First and aside, the truth is there's no definite always correct answer to this. A good amount of what makes a unit quote unquote good in a certain situation may not work that well in another. For example, on battlegrounds wherein you have very little terrain, like you would get if using just the core set components, ranged units have a huge advantage. This is very apparent if you play on featureless setups, so much so that I recall in our original games of AOTP, back when we first got it, before we had any hero escape terrain, Rachel and I basically agreed not to play green on a one-on-one -on -one match as we felt it all but assured a victory. Now once you add in terrain, where you're spending additional movement to go up hills or march through swamp or whatever, the huge advantage is greatly nullified. 
That being said, I want to stress I'm not trying to cop out of the question here. After playing somewhere between 80 to 100 matches of AOTP in a huge variety of scenarios, setups, troop combinations, and so forth, you do begin to see that, in the base set at least, certain colors are, generally speaking, better equipped to deal with situations than others. Abilities that look good on paper don't actually end up panning out that well, and some that look like crap on the card can actually be very useful. But enough BS, let's do it. So we ranked each color on three aspects. Their planeswalkers, their units, and their spells. Each aspect was assigned points from 1 to 5, 1 being best, 5 being worst. We added up the three scores, divided by 3, and voila, got an average for each color. Now keep in mind, lowest score is the best. So, coming in at number 5, and thus the weakest in the base set, is Red. Red is the classic case of looking great until you actually try them. Chandra's double strike may give her the highest potential damage, but combine it with a short range and no way to buff her defense, and she's far too much of a glass cannon. The Firecat's abilities aren't strong enough to offset their low life, and the Phoenixes, while having the rebirth ability, rarely do enough damage before dying, and then responding next to the Planeswalker, forcing them to run back into battle. You have to leave one away from the battle to keep the ability working. While red spells are great at damage, it's difficult to find the right situation for them to actually work well. All these issues add up to red being the weakest color. At number 4, we have green. Nissa is fairly middle of the road. Her sprint ability is great, but she can rarely get enough damage down. As for the elf rangers, they're great in wide open setups, but their ability goes to ship when they get tied up in a tight spot. The pummel roots are really just a crappier version of the rock's veterans. Where green really suffers, however, is in the spell department. There are spells in the green deck that literally do nothing unless you're playing against flying units, and in the base game, only red has flying units. However, given the hit-and-run aspect, there's enough here to make green marginally better than red, if played well. At number 3, we have white. Gideon is a melee powerhouse, but there's a huge risk in throwing your planeswalker into melee. Roll crappy for a few defenses, and you're dead. The core hookmasters are only great on the turn in which they're summoned. They really could benefit from another ability. The Rock's veterans, however, are probably the best melee units in the game, and they do help greatly with White's ranking. When it comes to spells, White has a lot to help their units out, and if you draw into the right cards at the right time, you can become extremely tough to kill. The perks and downsides of White's combination of units and spells do help elevate it to the 3 spot. With a little more power, it could have taken a higher ranking. At number 2, we have Blue. And I bet this choice might be a bit controversial, but hear me out. Blue spells are amazing. From a strategic standpoint, they are the best in the base set. The only area wherein blue suffers is that it's not easy to play that color well. You need to know the combos, you need to have a clear plan of how to achieve your goals overall. Play blue well, and it's amazing. Forget a part of your master plan, however, and blue can quickly fall apart. For a strong AOTP player, blue is actually probably the strongest color, but for a less experienced player, blue can be difficult to play well, and that's why we rank it at number 2. And at number 1, we have black. Black narrowly edges out blue in the base set based on two areas. First, the Planeswalker Liliana. Her snuff out ability is stupidly, grossly, and egregiously overpowered. Secondly, the minus 2 defense ability of the Reavers is also OP as hell. Combine this with spells like Killing Wave, which can lay waste to an entire melee squad, and the advantage becomes obvious. So why does black beat blue? Because anyone can win with black, while blue takes some experience. If I'm going up against a new to AOTP player and I want a challenge, I tell them to play black. Any other color, and I can stomp them in most cases. Blue's combos require a fair amount of planning, while black just requires a player to be A, breathing, and B, have their eyes open. So there you have it, the base set of AOTP ranked by 2 Bats Gaming. We hope this helps you out with your AOTP games, and by all means, let us know what you think about our rankings in the comments. We love talking about this game, and are really interested in what you have to say. In any case, thanks for watching. Please check out the rest of our AOTP series if you dig this vid. Until next time, take it easy.